Welcome to Electro Online. In the previous video we saw how to find the volume of a cube or a rectangular box, but here instead we have what we call a parallel pipette, which means that the base does not have to be a square, it could be a parallelogram, and the, the cube or the, the object doesn't have to be straight up and down, it could be leaning over like the Tower of Pizza. Hmm, how do we find the volume now? Well, it turns out that the volume is still going to be the product of the area of the base, even if it's not a cube or a rectangle, it could be a parallelogram, and we're going to multiply that times the height, which is basically the projection of the vector along the side onto a vertical axis. Vertical relative, of course, to the, to the uh, uh, orientation of the base. So now we know from the previous videos that we can find the area of the base by simply doing the cross product of two vectors along the two sides of that base. So that means that this is equal to A cross B and then we get a vector C which is perpendicular to that plane where A and B are in. That basically the vector C is, will be perpendicular to the base of that parallel pipe. And then to find the volume we have to multiply the area of that base times the vertical height, which is the projection of D onto C. So since C is the, the cross product of A and B, we can then say that this can then be dotted with the vector D, which would then give us the vertical height, and then if we multiply that times the base, we get the volume. And remember that this can now be written as C cross D, which can be written as the magnitude of C times the magnitude of D times the sine of the angle between the two, the sine of the angle theta. And that was going to be the volume of the parallel pipette. So what that means is, if we have a parallel pipette and you know the location of the corners of the parallel pipette so that you can define the three vectors, A, B, and D, all you have to do is take any two of the three vectors, you take the cross product of those two vectors, and then you multiply that times the third vector via the dot product. Now, if you do not know the angles, then you actually have to calculate the cross product and dot it with D. If you do know the angles, you could potentially say, well, then this would be A times B times the sine of phi, and then times D times the cosine of theta. So another way of looking at it is that the volume could be written as the magnitude of A cross B, which is A times B, times the sine of phi, and then you're going to multiply that times d times the cosine of theta, and that gives you the magnitude of the volume as well. Of course, we probably want to put absolute value signs around it in case that's a negative quantity. If it's a negative quantity, of course, you don't want the negative volume, it doesn't exist, you want to make it into a positive quantity. But So you can either do it by first taking the cross product, keeping it as a vector, the vector C, and then dotting it with the vector D, or you can take the magnitude of the cross product and then multiply it times D times the cosine of theta if the angles are known, and then you can find the volume that way as well. And that's how it's done.